Ni hao DV Asia. Today I'm going to walk you through some of my personal favorite features in Premiere Pro CS6. There's so many different reasons to upgrade to CS6. Um, the new user interface inside of Premiere, new trim controls, uh, just overall all the different tools inside of CS6 have been upgraded. There's so many different reasons uh, for you to want to use CS6. But I'm going to show you something that uh, will help you get your project organized and it's using a, a different style of organizing your clips and kind of rough cutting out your story using a storyboarding technique that's now found inside the project bin. So when I get started, I'm going to take the project bin and I'm going to use a keyboard shortcut called the tilde key on the keyboard to blow the project panel up full screen. So when I do this, I get these nice, rich, uh, big thumbnails. I just need to make sure I'm in thumbnail or icon view here. And I can zoom in and actually make these thumbnails as big as I want. So I'm going to go ahead and just zoom in to some of the clips that I have at the top of my project here. And I'm going to kind of organize these clips a little bit using this storyboarding technique. So to start with, I can pick up any of these clips. Now, when I roll my mouse across the clip, you can see that we can actually uh, kind of get a sense as to what the action is inside of a shot. So if I want to use this earlier in my project, I can just pick this up and move it and you see that this is starting to organize the different clips that we're going to use in our promotional piece that we're doing here. So I now have started to organize these clips in the order that I want to use them. We'll go ahead and take a shot uh, here. Here's the guy in the car and I want to put that right there in the shot. Now to trim this down a little bit better, right now these are just the raw clips. Nothing's been edited yet. I can click on each of these clips and use this little uh, scrub handle here or use the J, K, and L keys on the keyboard to go through and actually start to edit this clip and trim it down a bit. So let's find a point where he looks back at the ramp and I'll mark that as an end point. He starts to talk and now we're ready to go to our next clip so I'll mark that as an out point. So without going into the source monitor, without putting clips in the timeline, I can use this sort of storyboarding view to get the clips in the order that I want and actually trim the clips down and kind of rough out what I want to uh, use out of these raw clips. So this one's already been trimmed down. I can see that by the orange markers here. We'll go to this clip here. And again, I can run this backwards, mark my end point, run it forwards, mark an out point, move to the next clip and begin and keep going through and do this to each of the different clips. When I'm ready to drop these to a timeline and start using the more advanced trim controls in the timeline to really dial in my story, all I have to do is make a multiple selection in my project bin. I'll just select these four clips and come down to the lower right corner and there's a little button marked automate to sequence. When I choose this, this is going to drop the clips in order. I have selection order set up here, but we could actually change this to you know sort based on uh, clip name or other things. But in this case, we want to use selection order. And I can also choose exactly how I want these dropped into my active timeline. If I want to overlay these over the existing clips or I want to insert these, which is what I'm going to do in this case, we'll choose insert edit. And I can also do things like apply a default transition. So if I wanted to have dissolves between each of the different clips, I could apply the default video transition or audio transition. When I click OK on this and I switch back over to my main viewing mode, you can see that I've got a timeline set up here uh, with each of the different clips in the timeline and now I'm ready to work further with this project. Now the next feature that I want to cover is something called adjustment layers. And adjustment layers have been around for a while. They've been in Photoshop, they've been in After Effects, and this is a way of creating one layer in your timeline that affects all of the clips underneath it. So if I put an adjustment layer in video three, all of the clips in video two and video one will be affected by it and I can stack multiple different types of effects like color effects, blur effects into my adjustment layer. Most people are using this and they're thinking about it to, to affect the entire screen of all the clips. But I want to show you a little trick that you can do with adjustment layers. To start with, I've created a title and I'm just going to scroll down and I'm going to go ahead and double click on this so you can see that this is just an ordinary title um, that I've created using the built-in titler inside of Premiere Pro. 
This will also work with Photoshop files, and it'll even work with animated clips created in After Effects. You just have to have transparency or an alpha channel in the file for it to become an adjustment layer. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. And let's take the title, and I'll just drop this onto my timeline. And you can see right now it's behaving exactly the way a title I would expect a title to behave. It's, uh, it's just uh, overlaying itself over the top of the screen. But here's the little trick. Right click on the title, and there's now an option here to turn the title into an adjustment layer. When I do that, at first it looks like the title disappears. But now with the title selected, I can go into the effect controls and we'll bring up my list of effects here and I'll start by adding a blur effect. I'll just take this, drop it in here and when I start to blur the video you can just barely see it right now. You can see how it's blurring the pixels of the face here. Let's move to a different shot with some more action and now you're seeing what this is doing. It's actually applying a blur effect within the title. So I can continue to stack additional effects in here uh, let's go ahead and do a search on a fast color corrector. And I'll, with the uh, title selected, I can just double click on the fast color corrector. And I can come in here and give it kind of a bit of a color wash here. And the great thing about this is I can just hit play on this. And I can see how this is going to look on each of the different clips. And maybe orange isn't the best color because it kind of blends into that track. Let's try a blue color. That's going to really make the title stand out over that track and I can continue to stack additional effects in here. There's another effect called noise that looks really good on uh, certain titles. You wanna, don't want to overuse it, but it actually uh, can add a little bit of an animation function to your title. I'll go ahead and bring this up. And you can see this is starting to add sort of a noise overlay to the title. So when I hit play, you actually see it, uh, the title's actually animating. So this is just one way you can use adjustment layers um, with text, with a Photoshop file. Um, you can use it with uh, things like gradients that were created over in Photoshop uh, to affect different parts of a video or darken or lighten the video, add vignetting. There's so many things you can do with adjustment layers in Premiere Pro. And the best thing is it all works real time. I can continue to play and work in the timeline with my adjustment layers active. So I hope you find that useful. Thank you again. See you next time.